Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Today I'm going to show you how you can grow your very own copper crystals at home. This is a very easy way to grow a pure copper crystal, and it's a process known as electrowinning, where impure metal is deposited onto a pure metal surface. Now, it's very simple to do. All we need is a suitable glass container. I found this fishbowl at Goodwill. It's the perfect size. And now for the positive side, I'm placing in a copper wire insulated in the middle with some electrical tape. For the negative side, which will be the one receiving the copper, I just uh, hung a little wire over the center of it. Now I'm pouring in my copper sulfate solution. I use a strong solution to better conduct electricity, and I wire this up as follows. The positive side is known as the anode. This is depositing the copper. The negative side is known as the cathode. This receives the copper. My power supply is capable of supplying 16 amps at 3 volts. However, actual consumption is much less. The concentration of copper sulfate solution dictates the amount of current running through the cell. The more current running through the cell, the faster the crystal will grow, but the more irregular it will be. Now I'll admit, this is more of a black art than actual science and theory, but it may take a little bit of experimenting to find your perfect crystal parameters. I had to cut this one short because my anode was about to break, so I decided to take the crystal out of solution. When you take it out, you must immediately put it in water to get rid of the extra copper sulfate solution and then place it on a paper towel to dry. This was a beautiful crystal, but I wanted to try something else. I reversed the cell so the crystal was on bottom and the coil was on top. Wow, truly incredible. If you're wondering what that process was called, it's called electro-winning, also called electro-extraction, is the electro-deposition of metals from their ores that have been put in solution via a process commonly referred to as leaching, electro-refining, similar proofs to remove impurities from uh, something from ores. Sorry. You know, I really wish that they would just make the recording block invisible. Uh, I'm, I'm not even kidding. It really is frustrating on why it just... They put it in the middle of the screen. Like, it makes zero sense. It needs to be changed. But anyway, let's continue on. We'll see that... Co oh, copper. Copper was the most common metal for everyday use in ancient Egypt. Says the AI overlord. Copper in Egypt often contained natural arsenic, therefore it was particularly hard. Copper ores were mined and melted in the eastern desert and in Sinai. Ooh. So, you know, when we look at the dendra bulb here, you know, most people want to equate it to, you know, a modern-day light bulb. But if we actually think about the you know, the pre fund knowledge that they were showed, it couldn't possibly be a light bulb. Because what is a light bulb? We'll see that the light bulb is in a filament which is housed in a sealed oxygen-free chamber to prevent combustion. In the first light bulbs, all the air was sucked out of the bulb to create a near vacuum, an area with no matter in it. In a modern night bulb, inert gases are typically inserted. Oh, uh, ooh, okay. So when I see the dendro bulb here, you know, I, I do see maybe some kind of manifestation of a light bulb, but there's just too many things missing from a modern day light bulb that's not in there. And then even if they did have all that knowledge, why wouldn't they just have a real light bulb instead? Oh. That's why I believe what they used was induction magnetism, crystals, ores, metals. I mean, look, we, we clearly see they have some kind of tungsten, maybe filament in there. But, I mean, look at how much more is missing just to make this bulb glow. I'm going to tell you what I see. I see that number three, that looks like the crystal, maybe the copper, or some kind of filament that they had. in those arms there with that capacitor-looking thing is the magnetic inducer right there is a perpetual motion holder which causes induction on the crystals 
causing it to go. Oh, now you're, I bet you're wondering, well, how can they do that? Well, uh, with the process known as electro winning. I mean, if we look at one of these pictures when you Google electro winning, you can clearly see a more advanced process than the video you saw at the beginning of this video. And then when we go over to ancient Egypt, we see kind of the same setup right here. We, we notice that there is a main jar with some wires going into it with, you know, four other jars, well, clearly marked separate. So, you know, you, clearly you have two separations right there because one of them is marked and the other one is not marked. I mean, clearly shows some kind of flow of chemical process. Something is happening here. Looks like any other modern battery experiment. Um, but what if that is the secret? And then, you know what else is strange, right? There's always a female priestess, or it's always a female who's guarding the secrets when we look at oh, Why is that? Well, I'm going to tell you why that is right now. I believe that the females all held the secrets, the key back then. Why? Because the free female priestesses, you know, they're nothing more than just scientists or the equivalent today. You know, women would make the best keepers of this ancient knowledge and this ancient secrets. And I bet you're wondering, well, why would the why would they use the women? Why not use the men or whatever? Well, that's the polluted mindset of modern day thinking. We must we must enter a time capsule and transport our memory back to ancient Egypt. So let's think about this. If I had the pre-flood knowledge, I still need to teach it, you know, but who can you try? Who can I spread? Because, you know, I want to advance the society because I want to be comfortable living there. You know, you're creating your own paradise by using these primitives, but you're only elevating a certain few, just like today. Let's see, women back then, they literally had no power, you know, versus warrior men in those days. So, you know, women... Oh, they can't use the knowledge against you because you know they're not strong enough while you use men as the enforcers as always. I mean, think about it. This is how secret societies are born because you're impregnating all the priest class women. You're creating your own trusted circle. Um, this is the secrets of it. That's why you always see the women. That's why they always, they're always they lying to us today. Unbelievable. Let's look at some more ancient hidden knowledge. In the Pyramid Code, a documentary produced by Dr. Carmen Bolter, professor at the University of Calgary, a documentary well worth investigation. It reveals several insights, including the advanced nature of the psychoacoustic and biorhythmic effects of these ancient Sanskrit monuments that he claims have all been falsely attributed to the Egyptian civilization. Part of his testimony is as follows. It must be noted that due to Abdel's intimate knowledge of the Giza Plateau, he should undoubtedly be perceived as a reliable source of avenues for alternative esoteric research. He claims that in 1936, while the Sphinx was still covered up to the neck in sand, there were tunnels he personally explored, claiming that past the Abu Ghraib, a crystal altar was found containing a round disc in the middle of four radial lines, a symbol of Hotep, Hotep meaning peace and food. This round disc was a lid on a shaft, about 180 feet deep to the level of the ocean, where he claims there is still running water, and there is still, quote, much more to be found. Uh-oh, more water. Very true. So let's think about this. In our modern day light bulb, we fill the light bulb with an inert gas such as argon. So what if back then when they used those methods, what if they used water? What if they just filled this bulb with water and threw induction of magnetism and whatever crystal or copper strand they used? It caused it to glow. Unbelievable. So we'll see that magnetism, water, crystal, or some metal. You can create an ancient piezoelectric light. Unbelievable. Think about that. It would make so much sense. Think about the environment that they live in. They have all the materials. They have everything necessary. Unbelievably perfect environment. 
for whoever shows up with the ancient knowledge and could create it. You just need the work. It's just, you know, our modern day today, same thing back then, you know, nothing ever changes. We got away for a little bit, but then the grass came back and took over and we could see the destruction of America before our eyes. Unbelievable. But I bet you're wondering, well, how can we grow crystals that glow with magnetic inductions? Well, the ancient Egyptians, just think about it. They had massive explorations. Humans are naturally curious. What if people found stones that could do it already? This is why it was such a kept secret. Which makes you wonder, why aren't Egyptians today using piezoelectric electricity? Look at these stones. Do you see anything particularly special about them? I'll give you a few moments. Whoa, look at how these glow. But what is causing this, and how does it work? In this video, we will cover the topic of fluorescent minerals. Not all minerals are fluorescent, but the ones that are display an interesting property. Fluorescent minerals are minerals which have the property of being able to absorb a small amount of light and then release that light as a different wavelength of visible light. Certain minerals have electrons which can be excited and under special wavelengths of light can jump to a higher orbital in their atomic structure. However, this change is only temporary. When the electron soon falls back down to their original position, it emits a small amount of visible light. As a result, fluorescent minerals can change color when placed under a black light. Black lights have a high amount of the wavelength of light known as ultraviolet, or UV, the same light that can give you a sunburn. Light is a wide spectrum, as we as humans can only see a small part of it. Some notable fluorescent minerals include ruby, calcite, fluorite, and aragonite. To the right collector, fluorescent minerals can be relatively valuable if they display a nice range of colors. Do you enjoy fluorescent minerals? If so, comment down below, and thanks for watching. You see, now let's think about it. After all these videos, after this entire series, it, it's not so out of the question. It's not even that advanced if you think about it, you know? Unbelievable. The only advanced parts I could see are, you know, the high frequency pyramid. Who, who showed them the knowledge of how that worked? Who unlocked? The secrets of Egyptian energy. Who had the pre-flood knowledge to guide these human beings on an epic journey of knowledge? Unbelievable. Upgrading their society. Creating an oasis in the desert, for, which it was. Just think about it. And then after the Bible, when Pharaoh chased Moses, I, I noticed how everything went completely downhill. Unbelievable. The key to Egyptian energy, the high priestess class, the, guy, the person with the pre-flood knowledge, creating his own secret society, keeping the knowledge with his own private circle, thus creating the priest illuminated class, guarding the secrets, easily controlled and manipulated. Oh, I hope you've learned maybe something about ancient Egypt. And how, you know, with just a little common sense, a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of research, you know, the ancient Egyptians don't really seem that mysterious at all. You know, once you step away from all the university mind control, once you step away from the common way of thinking, once you get off that beaten path and truly unlock your not mind, the secrets will always lay, bear themselves to you out in the open. Unbelievable. Through God's will, everything is possible as long as you just think about it. Unbelievable.